Welcome back to the lab, y'all. Today, I've got a really awesome episode. I want to dive more into about LUNs, but really storage paths or LUN masking. Um, LUN masking is a very common term that it's called. I like to refer to it as storage paths. So get ready with me as we dive into storage paths and what they are. All right, so let's jump back in. LUN masking or storage paths, as I like to call them. Storage paths are how we actually control what is accessible by the host. So if you actually can see up here in my document, or, or this diagram, I should say, we're gonna walk through this together somewhat slowly. I know, I speak fast, feel free to slow it down on YouTube, a lot of people too. Um, but let's jump in here. So on the diagram, let's kind of go over what this is, all right? So normally the reason you would use storage paths a lot of times is you'd have what they call a SAN storage or a storage area network storage device, which you'll see on the right-hand side over here in which we've got this device, much looks like a Synology um, that's set up right now, and it's got a couple LUNs on it. Um, if you're wondering what a LUN is, if you're tuning into this video and you're like, all right, what's a LUN? Um, I'll go ahead and put a link to one of my previous videos, what is a LUN? Um, really good video, kind of dives into the basics of what a LUN is and why it's important, especially for something is what we're talking about today with storage paths. So once you've gone ahead and seen what a LUN is and you've caught up on that and get to where we are now, we're gonna go ahead and discuss how do we access these LUNs that are now on our storage system or our, on our SAN. So on the right hand side, you'll notice we've got three LUNs, which are basically just places for us to store data. Now for this, for this to be accessible by our host, we have to do what they call storage pathing or mapping um, to allow these hosts to be accessible. Now, one of the things to make this all happen is on the SAN itself, you'll have two different controllers most of the time. A lot of times, though, you can have one controller. Um, most, I would say, Synologies have a single controller, and that'd usually be like iSCSI. They'd use their, net, their NICs, their network interface connections, to do that. Um, some of the higher-end storage uh, interfaces, which is kind of what I'm covering today, I'm going to drag this onto my screen, use what they would call a SAS HBA or host bus adapter. And if you notice, it actually uses what they call a SAS plug. Um, the reason being is that SAS actually allows for multipathing. We'll get into multipathing a bit and why that's important. But let's go ahead and let's imagine that both these hosts, all right, have one of these installed. And why this is important is that if, if one of this host bus adapters is installed inside this host, what that allows us to do is the A1 would be, let me go ahead and click this, the A1 would be here on this host and A2 would be here. And that would be our two connections that we ultimately would actually end up connecting over here to the storage array. All right, so on the SAN, if you notice these two green lines, we have a controller one and controller two. And this is where we're gonna get into multipathing a bit, all right? What the two controllers allow us to do is allow us to have two accessible paths to the LUN. And this is important, especially as we get into redundancy, business continuity, disaster recovery, trying to make sure things stay in line as much as they can. Much like an airplane, we wanna try to have the cloud stay in the air as long as it can. So let's kind of dive in why this is important. We've got controller one, as you see up here, controller two down here. This gives us two ways to be able to access these LUNs. You'll kind of notice these stringing black lines. You see controller one can hit one, one, two, and three. You'll see controller one can hit one, two, and three. This is, that's good. Now, why is this is important? Is that just as I brought up on that host bus adapter, it has two plugs, A1 and A2. They each can go into a different controller. Now, why this is important is this is really great because this allows us to say controller one were to die, our system, when we set it up, will be smart enough to know, hey, I have a second route through A2 to go ahead and access these LUNs, and within almost you know, milliseconds, it's gonna instantaneously jump over. There may be a little bit of ink and kind of like a little scare on some of the hosts or some of the, the um, you know, machines, and they may blip for a second. You'll get alerts and everything else that everything's switched over or do a different path and that you've got a controller failure. But overall, everything should stay running, which is exactly why this is very important when we're trying to set up storage paths. The other thing we can do here to really actually increase our, our redundancy is A1 and A2 could actually be separate host bus adapters. So I know I showed you one host bus adapter, it's got two plugs on it. You could actually end up going ahead and getting a host bus adapter. You could get two individual ones with single plugs and actually use those. So say if like one host bus adapter died that was connected to controller one, you'd still be able to use the other host bus adapter. Now, let's dig more into multipathing, right? Because we have just, we've only been talking about host one. We've also got host two. What storage pathing allows us to do is it allows us to say, hey, let's go ahead and allow this host 
access to these LUNs. Let's allow this host access to these LUNs. And this is where LUN masking comes in because with these host bus adapters, with our controllers, we can actually allow, based off of what we would call our SAS address on our host bus adapters, we can actually tell what host they're allowed to LUNs. Now, a lot of times you would have the same host accessible to the same LUNs. Like in a smaller setup, you'd probably have two hosts. Like in my lab, I have two hosts. They're accessible to all the LUNs. Um, that way then things can kind of fell over between them. Now in larger data centers, larger setups, some different areas, depending on what you're doing, you may end up having a host that only has accessibility to certain LUNs over certain controllers, things like that. Um, and that's where multipathing comes into uh, to play and also just storage pass in particular, LUN masking, because we can actually control where the host is going, how it's going, and what data it can be accessed over these different systems and connections. So all in all, what is storage pathing? Storage pathing is a way for us to connect hosts over to, over to a shared storage connection. It could be iSCSI, or in our case, as I talked about today, it could be over SAS. And these connections allow us to have more than one way, if we use multipathing, to get access to these LUNs. And with that, that then allows us to have uptime, business continuity, disaster recovery, allows us to just have that uptime. Like I said, we want to keep the cloud up in the air as long as we can, just like an airplane. We don't want to have any, you know, we don't have any news stories. Let's just say that. All right. <laughs> but other than that, y'all, I really appreciate everybody tuning in today. That's storage pass, aka LUN masking, kind of in a nutshell. That's the basics of it. Um, drop a comment down below. Don't forget to kind of, you know, like, subscribe, all of that good stuff that everybody always talks about when they post YouTube videos. Um, and as always, I'll see you in the lab.